What's going on, chicken friends? It's Donna Little from the Coop Scoop, and I'm in the kitchen right now making up a little herbal concoction for my ladies because I have a sneezy chicken. Now, when I have something like this happen, I, I'm never one that just immediately panics and says, oh my gosh, my chicken is sneezing, she has a respiratory disease, and she's going to die and take everybody out with her. <laughs> That's just not what I normally do, and she is otherwise doing really, really well. So that is, you know, I don't have a lot of cause for alarm. Um, but when I have something like this happen, my go-to is never uh, pharmaceuticals. My go-to is never antibiotics. Now, I'm not a vet. There's my disclaimer. This is just what I do and how I handle this sort of situation. I definitely am aware that there's a time and a place for antibiotics. I just don't think that's what we're looking at here. But if you have a situation like this where you're just hearing a sneeze here and there, but everybody seems fine otherwise, then I would say maybe give this a try. And it'll it, everything I'm about to tell you is just nothing but good for them. It's nothing uh, that's going to harm anybody, and it's going to just boost their immune system their respiratory health, and their gut health. Now, my sneezy chicken is Caroline. She's my black copper moran. So, the reason that I think that she has started sneezing is this. We are in the South, and in the summertime, it's in the 90s, and tons of humidity, so we're just sort of used to that, and we had a week at the end of August that went from, you know, our usual 95 to 98 degrees down to like 78 degrees. And trust me, it was, it was amazing. I, I thoroughly enjoyed the entire week, but it's very not abnormal for us. And we went uh, into the 50s at night, and that is also something that doesn't happen here in the South. And then we sort of went back to normal. And now this week we're back down into the seventies again. And it is amazing, but we're usually really, really hot well into October. And then it starts to cool down and be a little more fall light. So I am enjoying our mini fake fall, but <laughs> I don't know how long this is going to last. But that coupled with the fact that she started to molt, and that is another thing that's just really odd for us because I don't, in all the years I've had chickens, I've never had chickens molt in the summer. And so that has just been a little bit strange. And she's the first one. And I started thinking, what, like, why is my chicken losing her feathers? She's got, she's so beautiful and full and all of a sudden she's losing them. And you know, what is going on here? And then the other ones started to lose their feathers. And then I realized they're molting in the summer. So I don't know if that bodes unwell for our potential winter we're going to have or if that's any indication that it's going to be like snowing and crazy here this winter but um she kind of had a little bit of a hard molt i've had a couple of other chickens that are having a little bit of a hard molt and i thought let me just go ahead and start doing some things to boost their immune system and give them a little added protein it's really hard on them when they molt like that because it takes a lot of their energy and resources to grow those feathers back. So I will give them good things that are going to help them. Um, I'm not normally concerned with their respiratory health when they're going through a molt, but because I have a sneezy girl, I am going to mix up a little herbal concoction. So since I've been hearing the sneeze, it's just been here and there. And at first, I wasn't sure who was doing it. You know, I would hear a sneeze and turn around and look, and there'd be 10 chickens standing there, and I didn't know who it was coming from. And then I saw her sneezing a few times, and so then every time I would hear a sneeze, after that, I would look, and it would always be her standing there, you know, in the crowd or whatever. So my, you know, if I was looking at something that seemed a little more serious, I would um, also probably consider move, removing her from the flock. Other than the sneeze here and there, she looks fantastic. She's eating great, no loss of appetite, no lethargy. Her comb is as big and beautiful and bright red as it always is. So I'm not really concerned that I'm looking at something contagious, you know, that's going to go through the flock because... I don't want to stress her out further. She's very reliant on her little flock mates. If it was one of my chickens like Maisie, Maisie would probably move in the house and never look back. 
her and Caroline, I mean, uh, and Charlotte, they would just be in here, like, living their best life, but Caroline loves her little flock mates, and so I think it would be very stressful for her if I removed her from the flock. So what I'm going to do is, um, what, well, I should say this. What I've been giving them over the past couple weeks since I started hearing the sneeze is some just electrolytes in their water with vitamins and some probiotics. But I'm going to start really for the next couple of weeks um, giving this to them every single day along with the herbal mixture so we can just really get them through their molt. She is, I would say, 80% through her molt. Um, the rest of the girls, you know, it's just some of them have just started molting. And, but I've probably got 10 or 12 of the ladies are molting right now. So I'm going to throw everything at them that I can that is going to be good for their respiratory health and their gut health. So my little concoction is I'm making four gallons today just so that will get me through you know, the next few days. But I do, in each gallon, I will do, and all of this is organic, um, I do a tablespoon of oregano, thyme, a half a tablespoon of basil, and then I will put maybe like a half a clove of garlic in with each gallon. Now, because some of those herbs can be maybe a little bit better and the garlic can be a little strong, I'll toss in a tablespoon or a tablespoon and a half of honey, and that'll kind of cut that. They love it. My chickens probably drink, you know, a gallon and a half of water a day when it's nice weather like it is right now. And, you know, probably more during the heat of the summer, but that's about how much they drink. So this will get me through the next few days because I'm going to give them this one day and then the next day in their water I'll do probiotics. And I go to a little local farm store that we have, but you can buy these anywhere. Um, you can get it in bigger containers. I just usually buy some of the little packets. And they'll have um, probiotics, and they also have electrolytes with vitamins. So I'll do one day of probiotics in their water, one day of electrolytes, and then go back to my little herbal concoction. But every single day, only because I'm seeing a respiratory thing, I wouldn't normally put this in with their water. I'll put... Uh, vet rx in there and i don't know if you've ever just heard of that or used it but you can buy it at you know on amazon you can get it at any little farm store and it's in a carrier oil and so you can um, put that in with their water or you can um, rub it on their waddles you can put it on their beak if you want to and it's got camphor in it so that's really good to you know help open their uh, nasal passages up and, you know, help them to be able to breathe better. Um, it's got like oil of oregano in it and rosemary and maybe a couple of other herbs in there, but it's also good for them and it's all natural. And when I have somebody that's showing any signs of a respiratory issue, I'll go ahead and just put a tablespoon of that in with each gallon and I shake it up really good. But when you put it in their water bowl or a waterer, the oil is going to naturally flow to the top. So every time they dip their beak in there, they're going to get a little bit of it on their beak. Like Caroline has really big common waddles, and she'll get her waddles in the water, so that'll put a little of that camphor on her waddles, and that'll just help keep her, you know, like I said, able to breathe easier. Now, I'm not seeing her mouth breathe at all, so she's, you know, we have definitely sort of jumped on this pretty early. But this is what I'm going to do for them for the next couple of weeks. It's going to be nothing but good stuff that's going to support their gut and their respiratory health and you can't go wrong with that anyway um, also when they're molting which doesn't have anything to do with the sneezing but i will but because i've got both things going on i give them scrambled eggs every couple of days or boiled eggs and i'll put some garlic and herbs in there with the um, scrambled eggs and that's just going to give them a little added protein i'll leave the shell in there with it and just crush it up because that's going to help them to grow those feathers back also. So I'm going to take you over to the stove and let you see my little herbal tea concoction that I'm mixing up. And we're going to get that done and out to the ladies as soon as I can get it finished. Here is our little herbal tea. And keep in mind, this is going to be for four gallons. So I have four tablespoons of oregano four tablespoons of thyme, two tablespoons of basil, and a couple of cloves of garlic. And what I'll do is I'll just strain this out once it's good and cool, and I'll just divide it up into four gallon jugs. 
And I only do that just because it's a time saver. My chickens go through probably, I don't know, when it's the weather's not super hot, maybe a gallon and a half or so of water a day. And I'll put like a little, like I said, a little bit of honey in here just to cut down on any bitterness of the um, herbs or the garlic. And in every gallon, I put one tablespoon of the Vet RX. And either, I don't usually do them together, but I'll either do a tablespoon of colloidal silver or a tablespoon of apple cider vinegar. And all of those things are fantastic for their gut health as well as their respiratory systems. Okay, so that is my little herbal concoction. It's going to be really good for the ladies. I'm going to split this, like I said, into four different um, gallon jugs and get some out to the ladies today and get them back on track. And Miss Caroline, 100% again, I hope you guys are enjoying our content. And if you are, hit that subscribe button and notification bell so you don't miss anything that's coming up. Have a fantastic day, guys, and I'll see you in the next video.